what it is, what's happening. Welcome back to the channel. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you watch this garbage. So, video today. Since I did a video a couple weeks ago called Story Time with Ed. Um, now, I post my videos on Instagram and Facebook for my local friends to see. And everybody liked my Story Time with Ed. So, I was going to do a quick Story Time with Ed again. So, today's Story Time is how did I get involved in this body style Ford pickup? So let's go back in time. Let's go back to, um, whew, I want to say 94, 90, I mean, it had to be 95, I think. Um, now let's see, let's see here. So about 1995, I had a shop in Newark. Now I've, I've always had a shop since I was about 17 years old. Now I didn't own the shop, I rented it. I rented a building and brought my tools and junk in. So I had a nice, nice place. Actually, this shop that I had in Newark, I was there for 12 years. It was a really nice shop. But um, I want to say it was 95. I needed a daily driver. Now, I had a couple. I, I've always been into lifted trucks. In fact, the shop in Newark was called 4x4 Unlimited. I did lift kits. I worked a day job in the shop I did at night uh, in the weekends. I put lift kits on and fixed guys' rears and transfer cases and all that jazz. So... Of course, since I own a full drive shop, what do I own? Lifted trucks. I had a really nice, really cool 79 Bronco that I put together for myself. It was black. Uh, it had 38s. It had cutout fender flares. Um, it spent 90% of its time with the top off. I used it to pull my boat. It was a fun truck. Um, I had a, I believe it was an 85. Might You know what? It might have been an 83, now I think about it. Square body Chevy. Um, it had 10 inches of lift. 38s, nasty small block in the truck. I mean, it, this truck was fun to drive. It just was a lot of fun to drive. Um, but the problem with that stuff was it was all lifted. So you couldn't just go to the store and you needed to use it as a pickup. Yeah, you could, but it was a pain. So I thought, well, I, why don't I buy myself a daily driver? Now, I always had projects at the shop, just like I do now. I always had two or three things apart. So I'll take it back before I bought the Chevy before I bought the, the 90 Chevy that this story is about of how I got involved in these. So I bought an 80, I had a, I had a 70 Ford, 1970 Ford F-150 pickup that I bought from a guy. It was a really nice truck. It was two-tone, baby blue and white. Good looking truck, loved it. But it was two-wheel drive and I just was like, eh. So I got this idea. Back then we used to have a paper called the Swapper, which was kind of like Marketplace and Craigslist but it was actually like a newspaper. Car guys, we always couldn't wait for it. I think it came out every two weeks, I think. We couldn't wait for it to come out because that would be the new list of junk that's for sale that people are trying to get rid of. And I would always scroll, scroll, scroll through it and see what's in there. Oh, I see this F-250 in Ellesmere. It, it said burn, burned up parts truck. So I ride up and look at it. F-250 four-wheel drive, and it caught on fire under the hood, and it had burned up the cab. Now, the idea was buy this truck, take my 70 Ford, put it on that frame. So I buy the burned up truck, get it back to the shop, start measuring. It's not going to work as easy as I thought it would in my head. So I'm looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. Man, it's going to be a lot of work to make it work. So I kind of scratched that idea. And I put the burned truck out back behind the shop. Just sat out there for a while. Well, I'm back to like, well, yeah, I still need to get myself a daily driver other than this lifted stuff. So I bought this 90 Chevy pickup. Um, so what's it, like four-year-old four truck. It had like 47,000 miles on it. It's four-wheel drive. I believe it had a 5L in it. It had roll-up windows, vinyl seat, vinyl floor. It didn't have a whole lot going for it, but it was an eight-foot bed pickup, four-wheel drive, and had AC, which is, which is what I wanted. I wanted AC. And I wanted four-wheel drive and an eight-foot box. I didn't want a short bed. I wanted an eight-foot box because I would use a truck for the shop. So I buy it. it runs good. Well, it just doesn't fit my four-wheel drive shop because it's stock with little skinny tires on it. So I thought, well, I'll put a body lift on it. That way I'm not fooling with anything in the suspension. I'll put a body lift on it, maybe like a 32. So that's what I did. Put a three-inch body lift on it. Put a set of 32, 12, 50, 15s on it. Put a set of... Uh, I think I had Mickey Thompson wheels on it or something, I, I think, if I remember right. Start driving it. It's doing good. Take it to Carlisle one time, you know, that's good. About a couple weeks into owning it, 
it started picking up a little shimmy. And it started out like 35, 40 mile an hour, just a little shimmy. And then it progressively gotten worse and would get worse to the point to where it was like really bad. I'm like, what's wrong with this truck, you know? Ran in the shop one day, jack it up, check the front end. Idle arm, pitman arm, trashed. Ball joints had a little bit of play in them, so I thought, you know what, I'll go through the front end. I put ball joints in it, idle arm, pitman arm, set of shocks, check all the bushings, blah, 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 send it off, get a front end alignment on it, bring it back, drives great. Now, I put all the high-end Napa stuff that you could buy in it. You know, think I'm doing the right thing, right? I don't know, I drive it a couple weeks, maybe a month. It starts doing it again. It starts out just oh so slight, and then as the days go on, a week or two goes on, it gets worse. You gotta be kidding me, right? So I bring it back in the shop, jack it up. Sure shit, I alarm, pippin' arm. Got, got movement in them again. I'm like, come on, man, really? So this time I thought, Napa said they would warrant to themselves, so I'm just gonna return it. I'm gonna get GM stuff, just yeah, I work on stuff every day. I, I see stuff like this all the time. So I thought, well, we got a problem. We already bought the high-end aftermarket stuff. Let's just go back to the factory stuff and see how it does. Put the factory stuff on it. Get it realigned. It's all good. Everything's fine. Start driving it. It goes a couple of months. It starts doing it again. Down, I'm like, what the hell? So, I'm irritated with this truck because it just had some other little things that would bother me. Um, like the door panel came apart on it. it. Just little things were starting to irritate me. This is a truck that's got 40 some thousand on it and I've already got all these issues. You know, I'm thinking to myself, this isn't off to a good start. So, I decided I'm going to see if GM will warranty him. So, I go back to the deal. Yeah, we'll give you another set. No big deal. Put another set on. Have my guy check the alignment. It's good. I'm driving it. I'm like, cool, we're good. It pukes the motor. I'm driving it home from work. Actually, going from, I worked, I think it was like five miles away from my shop. I worked in Hocast, and my shop was in Newark. I think it was like five miles. I'm coming down the, down the it's, it's, it's a hill to come down. I'm coasting. And I get to the red light at the end of the road. I'm like, oil pressure gauge is doing one of these. Now, that, had, that, that Chevy had the old sweep. If you remember the 90 Chevy trucks, 88, the gauge is kind of sweeped. It's kind of bouncing. That was real. Give it a little gas, it would go up and stay there. Let off the gas, it would do one of these. What the wrong with this thing? It's a mile to my shop. I get to the shop, it ain't moving. And I start hearing a little, like a lifter tap. You gotta be kidding me. So I fold with it for a little bit, put a mechanical gauge on it. It ain't got shit for oil pressure. So this thing's puked the motor. Something and it's something and it's coming apart or in the process of coming apart. So now I'm like, great, there goes the daily driver. Which isn't a big deal. I got other things to drive, but you know, it was my daily. So I'm like, shit, it's gonna need a motor. So I just get the big lifted Chevy truck out, because it's winter time, so the Bronco spent most of its time with the top off. So the Bronco, my shop was big enough, the Bronco sat in the corner, and I just used to throw a car cover over it, and the, the top was hardly ever on. I don't think, I, in fact, I think the top was only on it when I sold it. So I thought, well, get the Chevy out, dig it out from the back. My shop was long, it was narrow but long, so I dig the Chevy out, I was like, well, I'll just start driving the Chevy again. So I started driving it, and I'm thinking, man, this is crazy. This thing's hard on fuel. And the biggest problem with the Chevy truck was I couldn't drive it without being an asshole. Because this, this thing would light the tires up. I mean, this thing really, really ran well. I mean, it got a 38-inch tire on it. It's got a 456 gear. And it's got a nasty 350 in it. That It was one of those motors, you know, I got a used camshaft. Oh, I got a set of heads over there. I think I got an intake up in the attic. You know, one of those deals. It was a throw-together motor. And, man, I'll tell you what. Out of all the 350 Chevys I had, that thing would just scream. And you could just lay your foot flat on the floor and just let it scream. And it, I, it just ran. It always ran. The thing just always ran really well. And it would light those 38s up on that truck. Now, granted, it's a pickup. I know it's light in the ass. But still, light a set of tires like that up through first, second gear. And I used to, you know, and I, you couldn't drive the truck without being an asshole. It just was fun. At two and a half inch exhaust, the flow masters, the thing sounded good. The truck just looked mean coming down the road. It was just a lot of fun to drive. 
So I'm driving that thing. I'm like, this is crazy. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to tear this truck up because you just, you couldn't get in it without driving like an asshole. So I was come to the shop one night and thinking, man, I got to find something else. You know, I, I took the motor all apart that was in the 90 Chevy. I sent it out to machine shop. All the bearings were down to the copper. Cam bearings were trash. I, I, something went through it. Something come apart. So I sent everything out. Let him look at it. Let him determine, are we going to fix this motor or put it in the trash and just buy another motor? You know, figure it out. So in the meantime, come to the shop one night, you know, sitting around with the guys for bullshit. And I'm thinking, yeah, I got that 85 F250 out back. It's all burned up. And a buddy of mine he gave me a lead on a F-150 six-owner two-wheel drive truck that had lost the trans. It was sitting over at a warehouse. And he says, the guy's got to get it out of there. The job's on him because he just left it there. I think I bought the thing for 150 bucks, 200 bucks. So I went over my wrecker one night, picked it up, ran back to the shop, and I'm sitting around with the guys with all bullshit. And I went, you know, it's an ugly F-150, but it's got a really nice cab on it. It was two-toned. The center of the doors were black. It had a big, it was an 80, 84, 85, so here it had that great big aluminum trim with the, the black rub strip. Um, the top was silver. This bottom right here, right about this crease down was silver, and the center was black. Ugly. Paint was all coming off the roof. Paint was coming off the, the hood and the tops of the fenders. The fenders had rust in them around the wheel well. The bed was all beat up and had rust around the wheel well. But my burn truck, the truck that was burned up, had a really nice bed. It actually had two real nice doors, too. But the cab was junk and the front clip was junk because it had been on fire. The motor was full of water in the burn truck. It had 351 in it, but it was full of water. So I decided, you know what? This weekend I'm going to knock the cab off the burn truck and see how bad everything else is. So I get the cab off. I get the front clip off. Everything else is fine. Trans has got red, red transmission fluid in it. No water in it. I'm thinking, huh. So I, I get the cab off the two-wheel drive truck. It's super easy. I mean, we had the cab off. Me and a buddy had the cab off less than an hour. Off and sitting on the ground. Now, I had, back then, I used to have a wrecker with a long, long boom on it. So we just run a strap, put the windows down, run a strap through it, pick it up, set it down. Piece of cable. So I started looking at it. saw the motor mounts were a little different from 600 V8. Saw how I could bolt those in. So I bolted them in. I stuck the 600 in. I took the exhaust, the complete exhaust system off the two-wheel drive truck, stuck it on the 250. Um, put the cab on, put the front clip on. I bought two new fenders, put two fenders on it. Now, when I put it together... All the bolts were kind of shitty, so I decided, well, instead of going and buying all the bolts, why don't I just put a body lift on it, and I'll put an ad leaf in the front, because it, it had a nosedive, so I thought, ad leaf in the front, a body lift, the truck will have a husky stance, but won't be ridiculously high, and I can still use it as a truck, but it'll look cool. My idea in my head was paint it and letter the doors with my shop name on it, which was 4x4 Unlimited, which is, so the doors were all lettered like that. So... I did that. So I drove the truck around for, oh man, I'll bet you six or eight months. It was ugly. Like I said, doors are black and silver. Fenders are black. Hood's gray. The bed's blue and silver because that's what color the burn truck was. I drove that bitch, I bet you, six or eight months, nine months, something like that. I drove it a long time. Man, it just drove and ran. Even with the six on it. The six on was a little bit of a pig in that truck. But it had a 410 gear, so it had enough to get up and go from a red light. But, I mean, if you wanted to pass somebody, it wasn't happening. But for just driving it around and using it as a daily driver, it was perfect. It ran great. It drove unbelievably awesome. So, of course, you know, throughout, that, this all took place over a couple of months. And I, got the Chevy, I got the Chevy back together. I got the motor back in it and got it running. But I, I didn't drive it. I took the insurance off and I went, I ain't driving it. Because something else is just going to break on it. It just was a constant battle. Forty-some thousand miles, and it loses a motor. It has a front end. The door panels come off. It just was. It just kept going and going. I said, this piece of shit, because that's what it was, a piece of shit. I said, it's got to go. So I had it around the shop for a while, and uh, I was kind of disgusted. I said, this is the last Chevy truck I think I'll ever own. Because that burned-up truck that was pieced together out of two trucks runs and drives so much better than this 40,000 mile piece of garbage. So I finally sell the 90 Chevy and I gotten into mud ball racing. So uh, oh, by that, by, right before I sold the Chevy, I pulled the six owner out. I had 
put the, I actually rebuilt the 351 that was originally in the four-wheel drive truck and put it back in the truck. So now it's got the V8 back in it. 351, four barrel, it had headers and door exhaust, all that bullshit. And I was using it to tow my mud bog truck. I got into mud bog racing. So I was using it to tow the mud bog truck. The problem was it was a little bit, it was, it, it didn't have, it, it was a little gutless on some hills. It just, it would do it, but you just, you were working it. So I was like, ah, I think I want to, I think I want to find me a diesel pickup or something to pull this trail because the mud truck was a little heavy. So I decided, well, I'm going to sell that Chevy truck. I'm going to sell that 90 Chevy, get rid of that. So I went out and bought an 88 F350 IDI diesel, C6 trans, full drive. Whew. What a hell of a truck that was. Oh my God. I drove my mud bulb truck up and down the East Coast, out to Ohio, um, down in Virginia and through the, through the hills. I mean, this thing just, you weren't winning no races with it, but it didn't matter if, it didn't matter if the trailer was empty or full. It went the same speed and it burned the same amount of fuel. I mean, it just, you couldn't kill it. I, I bought the truck. I forget how many miles it had on it, but I put another 180 190,000 miles on it before I finally sold it. I wore out two sets of tires on the truck and two sets of brakes on the truck in the time I owned it. It just was one hell of a truck. It just it just kept going. Like I said, you weren't going to win their races with the IDI. But it didn't matter if it was empty or full. It got the same fuel mileage and it went the same speed. It just was one hell of a truck. And after that, after between the F-250 and the IDI, I went... I'll never own a Chevy truck for myself ever again. I haven't looked back ever since. I've owned nothing but these for myself. I got a brand new four-wheel drive F-150 5.0 Coyote motor truck in the bays over there. Uh, I daily drive a 96. Uh, we got a 96 Bronco with 150,000 on it, 5.8 truck. There's 18. There, let me just put it this way. I got 18 of these trucks. I just bought a... Um, 92 F-150 Night Edition, 5.0, five-speed, flare-side truck. That will actually be the first truck that I own that I'll lower. Um, I've lowered trucks for people before, but this will be the first one that I've owned myself that will be my own personal truck that I lower. Normally, I, I lift them, like this truck's getting a six-inch lift. Um, but that will be the first truck I, I'll I'll own for myself that's lowered. I actually just bought the Dream Beams and the, uh, the rear axle flip kit I got to pick up from a buddy of mine. Um, but right now I just did all the brake lines, full exhaust system. And this weekend I'm going to put all new hoses. Um, it's only got a one core radiator in it, so I'm going to upgrade it, put a 351 radiator, which is a three core. Um, I'm going to put a three-core radiator in it, all new hoses, belts, all that jazz, get that all taken care of, and then I want to go through the AC system. Then I'll uh, take it over to DMV, get it inspected, and once it's inspected, uh, I'm going to antique the truck. So in my state, when you antique it, it never goes back to DMV. So then I'll bring it back and lower it and uh, do some wheels and tires and stuff like that. And uh, just be a cool truck to kick around in. But starting to go to car shows, you see these trucks at car shows now, so... I wanted to build, the reason I wanted to build that truck was first off, it's a night, which not many people see them, but it's a cool enough truck that um, you can go to car shows, people can appreciate it for what it is, but if I want to go to a car show that's like two hours away, I can turn, I know, I'm getting old, because I want the, I want AC, I want radio, and I want comfort, which that truck will give me all that. Now, I got my 52 Ford, and my 53, and my 58 Thunderbird, I got all them, and they're fine, and I, I can stay local with those. I just gotten to the point where I just don't want to drive them. It's not that I don't trust them. I've driven that 52 Ford. I've driven it four or five hours away from home with no problems. It doesn't scare me at all. But if after three or four hours of being in it on a hot day, you don't even want to walk around because you're just wore out from driving. So I wanted something a little newer to um, just go to them longer. Because really, when you're at a car show, you're walking around. You're away from your car anyway. You're seeing friends and you're hanging out. So why not ride there in comfort? And then when you're tired of walking and talking all day you get in it turn the air on turn the radio on drive on home and that's what i want to do drive on out this video so look keep it real holla at your boy catch you in the next one